Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about the chlorination of isooctane. And we're going to do what we did in the last video, uh, look at uh, all of the possible monochloro products. But because isooctane is more complicated, there's, you might be able to expect that we're going to see more uh, possible products. And rather than fill in every possible hydrogen, I'm going to go ahead and, and condense my, my CH3s uh, because we know that you're going to get the same product from any of the hydrogens on those CH3s. Of my secondary position, my hydrogens, I'm going to go ahead and put in the wedges there because uh, we're going to create a chirality center there. Uh, and this looks a little messy uh, because there are a lot of hydrogens here. Um, but we can do the same thing we did with butane in the previous video, just systematically replace uh, all of the possible hydrogens <clears throat> and see what we get. Uh, and once again, I'm not going to represent any of the, the extraneous kind of hydrogens on the the product side, I'm just going to keep the uh, carbons and the chlorine. So uh, the first three products that I have drawn, uh, one of them is by halogenating at whoops, this position here. Uh, one of them is at replacing this tertiary hydrogen. And one of them is replacing the hydrogen at this methyl group. Now we're going to move in towards the middle. Uh, go ahead and draw the hydrocarbon skeleton. Notice that in none of these are we getting a rearrangement of the hydrocarbon skeleton. Radical reactions do not produce carbocations, so you don't want don't need to worry about rearrangements. I'm corny. Now, so here are our two from our secondary, and uh, these two are enantiomers of each other. I'll leave you to figure out which one is R and which one is S. It's good practice. And then I have uh, the next carbon over is this tertiary, or sorry, is this quaternary carbon? No hydrogens here, so no chlorines there. Like, don't don't draw a chlorine here. Yeah, don't draw a chlorine there. And there are no hydrogens there. Chlorination requires a hydrogen to, to uh, work. And so then I'm just going to draw the product, swapping out uh, hydrogens on each of the methyl groups. And uh, we're going to see what that looks like. So I initially had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different positions. And... Um, you know, there might be eight different products. However, I'm going to go ahead and regroup these products into three different groups, three, four, four groups based on similarity because I didn't necessarily generate them in that order. So I'm going to take and separate this one that's tertiary. These two that are primary on the left, there's this isopropyl group on the left. These three that are primary from the right on that tert butyl group on the right, and then the two secondary in the middle. And now we're going to determine whether any of these are the same compound. And immediately we're going to look at this one and say, oh, hey, this looks like this looks like it's the same compound. And it's, uh, it's, like, it's like five chloro, two, two, four, methyl pentane. Oh, and then my program decided it needed to do that. Silly. There we go. Uh, and so both of these are the same thing. Uh, over here, I have four chloro, two, 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 four trimethyl pentane. Uh, yeah, same, same sort of carbon chain. Chlorine's in a different place. 
And then you can guess that that uh, down here in the middle, I'm going to have, you know, R and S, three chloro, two, two, four trimethyl pentane. And then finally down at the bottom, these three compounds are all one chloro, two, two, four trimethyl pentane. Oops, let's make that look correct. And so we can eliminate some things that are the same, right? We can eliminate uh, any of these to one chloro, two, two, four trimethyl pentane. It's all the same compound. So here's one product. Get this out of the way here, over here. Um, we need to keep both enantiomers of, of both, both enantiomers here. They're different compounds. Uh, here's my 4 chloro 224 trimethyl pentane. I keep that. Uh, up here. It's very tempting to consider these two things the same thing, but actually, um, actually we have a problem because in putting a chlorine on here, we made this carbon atom a chirality center. So there's a, there are potential for different and antimer. So if one of these methyl groups was on a solid wedge and the hydrogen was on the dashed wedge, draw in the hydrogen and draw in the solid wedge. These are enantiomers of each other. So actually there are two different enantiomers up here. So now we can count them out. One, two, three, four, five, six total different products. And, you know, depending on how prepared you felt for this task, you might have estimated more. Uh, you might not have recognized the chemical equivalents of some of the groups, or you might have estimated less. You might have over, you know, compensated for chemical equivalents. Go ahead and just like draw out some random hydrocarbons and practice doing this. Um, and secretly, this thing that we're doing uh, is compatible, actually, if, you, if you've done NMR spectroscopy, is compatible with identifying chemically equivalent groups. It is 100% the same skill, just in a different context. In the next video, we're going to come back to this situation and try to figure out what the distribution of these products are and which one of them might be the major product. Um, and then we'll wrap up the series with some synthesis applications and allyl bromination. Thank you for watching.